My name is Anz Gerichter, and I'm presenting a paper co-authored with Ahmed Khanna and Eberhard Riesenkampf. The title of the paper is Revisiting the Role of the Environment in the Capabilities Financial Performance Relationship. In this paper, we address some key issues in the so-called capabilities-based view of the firm. According to this view, organizations have capabilities, and differences in these capabilities are thought to account for differences in their performance. Now, within this literature, a distinction has been made between two broad groups or types of capabilities. First, there are so-called ordinary capabilities, which help firms to make a living, that is, to run the existing lines of business as efficiently and effectively as possible. A second type of capabilities is what's called dynamic ones. These dynamic capabilities are those that help firms to renew their stock of ordinary capabilities over time. Typical examples include the mastery of organizational change or innovation and the capacity to develop long-term strategies. Now, although this distinction between ordinary and dynamic capabilities may seem clear, many questions relating to it have been left unanswered. First of all, if this distinction made sense, you would probably expect that dynamic capabilities are particularly important for firms in situations of environmental change. In fact, some authors in this literature define a firm's capabilities as its ability to address rapidly changing environments. Now, therefore, we would expect that in situations of environmental change, the importance of dynamic capabilities as a driver of firm performance increases relative to the importance of ordinary capabilities. And in our paper, we are testing this expectation. Second, we seek to clarify the relationship between dynamic and ordinary capabilities. One view is that ordinary and dynamic capabilities are quite different from one another. If that was the case, they should probably have distinct performance consequences. But another more moderate view is that the distinction between ordinary and dynamic capabilities is somewhat blurry. To address these issues, we are using meta-analysis, which is a set of statistical techniques that allow us to aggregate and reevaluate the results of 115 prior empirical studies on the relationship between capabilities and the financial performance of firms. There are three important insights that emerge from our work. First, we find that both ordinary and dynamic capabilities enhance the financial performance of firms, and they do so both in stable and in dynamic environments. But we do not find that dynamic capabilities are more important for firm performance than ordinary capabilities. Second, in changing environments, both ordinary and dynamic capabilities have a stronger relationship to firm performance than they do in stable environments. But again, that is true for both types of capabilities. It is not the case that in changing environments, dynamic capabilities suddenly begin to outshine the importance of ordinary ones. Third, we find that ordinary and dynamic capabilities are very closely related. They do not substitute for one another. Rather, we find that they are complementary to one another and that they reinforce one another. There are also some practical implications that can be drawn from our work. The most important one is that firms and their managers should not underestimate the value of what is called here the ordinary capabilities. Even when they are in turbulent environments, firms should keep their eyes on efficiency and effectiveness and on keeping their costs low. Another recommendation is that firms should bring together the people who are running the current operations and those involved in innovation and strategy in order to leverage the value that they can create together. We hope you found our work interesting. Thank you very much for watching.